Hello, Bell Ringer fans, Living Environment fans. We're back for Tuesday. And um, remember, you have a new seat. You have new seats here in class. It's your new lab partner. And um, if you don't like your seat, too bad. <laughs> Bell Ringer. It's Mr. Kovacs class. You might learn that time. It's Mr. Kovacs class. He's interested too. It's Mr. Kovacs class. And he's super cool. It's Mr. Kovacs class. All right, so we're talking cell membranes and uh, my analogy, first analogy is cell membranes like a chain linked fence. Hey, you tell me, what was the purpose of that analogy? Really, it's not a chain link fence. It's made out of lipid, right? And the lipid comes in this bilayer. We call it the plasma membrane. Anyway, um, you tell me, these are lipids, right? Especially this part, hydrophobic. What would happen if the cell membrane was not hydrophobic? Good. Yeah, that would be terrible. It would be really wet. Everything would dissolve. All right, and so the cell membrane is not only lipid, it's also got proteins that move through. Some are marker proteins, some are receptor proteins, some are uh, carrier proteins or channel proteins. And there's two types of movement across the cell membrane that you need to know. And that is, of course, you've got what's known as uh, passive transport, like diffusion, where small things just move from high concentration to low concentration until there's a balance. Or sometimes we call this facilitated diffusion, where, again, things move from high concentration to low concentration, but they can't fit through the membrane. So they have to go through a, like a tunnel protein, a channel protein, or they have to be carried by a carrier protein into the cell in order to achieve the balance. So if you go with the flow, we call that passive transport. And then, um, yeah. All right, so diffusion is just floating through the membrane. Facilitated diffusion is floating through the membrane with the aid, the assistance of a channel protein. If you wanna go against the flow, well then you need energy and that's called active transport. All right, active transport. And the energy that cells use is called ATP. Like if you look at this diagram here, all these squares, they wanna move that way to balance themselves out. Okay, so the only way to get them to stay unbalanced is to actively pump them out of the cell using energy, active transport. All right, so you need to know the difference between passive and active transport. Ooh.